What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Biffer Garage and finally to another 914 video. Today, we're doing a full LED conversion on this Porsche that applies to most early air-cooled cars. So here is all the things we're gonna do on this 914 today. So uh, we're gonna talk about some things that are gonna apply specifically to 914s, and then a lot of this applies to your early air-cooled cars, your 911s, things like that, that are running a 12-volt system. The parts today are from Vintage Car LED for the headlights and Spokework LED for the remainder of the kit. So we've broken our, our car down into the front end, the rear end, and the interior of the car. Uh, and so we're gonna start up front today. Uh, we're gonna do headlights from Vintage Car LED. We're gonna do the front marker lights. We're gonna do the turn signals and we're gonna do the fog lights, which is gonna probably be the most involved part. Uh, then we're gonna probably jump to the back. Uh, the reverse lights, the tail lights, and the brake lights are all these nice panels. Uh, and so there's some 3D printed clips that you screw in and then they clip in place. The license plate lights, uh, the little uh, engine compartment lights, uh, the corner lights actually built into one of the others. Those are just quick bulbs that you drop in. And then inside is pretty straightforward. There's a LED light for the back pad. Uh, there's the backlights for the gauge when you turn the lights on. Uh, there's backlight gauge for the center console gauges. There's a bulb for the fasten seatbelt sign. And we are actually adding a third brake light to this car, trying to get some light up high since the 914s are so small and so low. So let's take a look at the parts over here on the bench. So starting at the front, these are our vintage car LED headlights. Uh, these are, a uh, H4 style beam, nice and flat. They'll fit really well into the housing. If you remember when I did the LED headlights on my car, they stood up a lot, and so I had to trim. Uh, so these are actually super, super nice pieces. This is our kit for the fog lights. Uh, and so there's seals, there is the board with this awesome heat sink. Uh, and so we're gonna have to get into this in a few minutes here. We have our turn signal and front markers with the clips. And then we have just the little bulbs that drop into the side marker lights. As we move back, uh, we have our third brake light that we're gonna put up nice and high right above uh, the uh, rear glass, kind of probably up towards the Targa. Uh, we have bulbs that'll go in some of the gauges here and here. And then outside the car, we have several boards here. These are for the reverse lights from Spokeworks LED. These are the rear turn signals that have the little side markers as well. And then we have the brake light panels. So all of these use um, a 3D printed clip that uh, uses a little bit of a friction fit and it slides into the housing. So we're gonna go jump into the front end of the car and uh, pop the headlights up, unhook the battery and start tearing it apart. So key on, headlights up, unhook the battery, and then I typically just turn the key back off. That'll let your headlights stay up for you in order for you to get access to this. So um, we're gonna pull off uh, the bezel and then the headlight bulb, these are just a quick drop in and then we'll move our way out to the side markers and then we'll go to the fog lights. Yeah. All right, so there's three, one, two, and a third over here that hold this bezel on. I always thought the white surrounds looked silly or they were just faded, but the early cars had white and the later cars, starting late in 72 or early in 73, somebody will correct me if I'm wrong, had black ones. So I was gonna change mine, but I actually kept the white ones. This bulb on this side is very difficult to get to. So just be careful you're not scratching up your marker light or you get out your 90 degree Phillips head and try to pull this out. But thankfully, not a problem here. So once these are out, this bezel will come off pretty easily here. And you just have to work it around the eyebrow. Um, I'm gonna do my best to not pop this eyebrow out if I can. So once that's out, it's one, two, three to hold the headlight bezel in, and then we'll drop the new one in place. All right, so, we got our trim ring off. It's a great time to clean this up. If you look at the hardware, you have the ones that look like wood screws. Those are what holds on the bezel. And then you have the little machine screws. That's what holds on your trim ring. So your regular standard glass headlight that every car had a long time ago 
has a three prong setup like that and comes out. The nice thing is the new one uh, from Vintage Car LED. This is actually the one that is branded Hella. It is a glass. Um, I've seen a lot of these that are plastics. That is significantly nicer. The best thing is that it comes with the same plug. We're just gonna line this guy up here, plug it in, and I'll kind of tuck that back behind. And it keys in super nicely into the housing. And then we'll just put our trim ring back on. It's easy as that. So if you're just upgrading the headlights in your car, 911, 914, you know, whatever kind of older car, that's literally how easy it is. It's a huge upgrade in, in uh, lumen output and is an excellent way to uh, make your old car a little bit more modern and a little bit more drivable. The other way to know that this is right is the Hella is at the top uh, once you've oriented it going back in. So we'll tighten this guy back up and then we'll move on to the marker light. Yep. All right, so we're gonna do the marker light on this side. It is two screws coming off. And the lens comes out. So there is a seal. This seal actually goes around the body, seals the housing to the body and the lens to the housing as well. So we're gonna set that aside. And then this is just a push and turn bulb that comes out. You can see it's got two offset lugs and just two terminals on the back. So it's super easy to pull out. With the new one, you're gonna use these nifty 3D printed clips. This curve part is gonna actually key in where the bulb plugs in right there and it'll hold it in place. So we'll grab one of the screws out of the Smokeworks bag, just this tiny little guy, and then it will go at the top end of the light, just like this. So I'll drop that screw in from the top and we'll tighten this guy down gently. It is cool that these are all 3D printed parts once we get this tight, I'll show you. They're even 3D printed with 914 on them. So what's gonna happen is you're going to plug this in the place that the bulb came out. So just make sure you note which lug is the shallow lug and which lug is the deep lug. I believe that the shallow lug is up and just make sure that you push this in firmly as you do it. So you can decide if you wanna attach that clip before or after you get this in place. You have to push down a decent bit to get it to seat. So it's push, and then you're gonna turn it clockwise. All right, so that's set. Uh, so it actually turns counterclockwise. Um, and then this, just tuck your wires in. That key's in on that. Key's in right there. And this will hold in place once you can get it over that rubber seal. Um, so you can see there's two little slots that'll line up, and then the top will go in. So usually I'll put that bottom one in first and then we'll slide in the top. Once that's in, pop your lens cover back on and you will have an awesome bright new LED. So I do believe these are available as a kit or individually. So if you're just kind of working your way through this a little bit at a time, you could grab side markers and your turn signal marker lights. Uh, you could grab just the headlights from Vintage Car LED or you could grab just these guys from Spokeworks. And there's your marker light. All right, so the side markers, or the warts, as people like to call them, I've already taken them off my car, <coughs> um, are super, super easy. They just illuminate, they don't blink. They just have a regular old bulb. And you can tell that this car still has all the right lenses because they all match and they all look aged similarly. This little bulb turns and pops out. And the new bulb, turns and pops in. So note on this bulb, it only has one filament, so it's just two even lugs. So it's just a matter of push and turn in and that fits. And it's back on. And just make sure that you line that gasket up. Back on with the screws. All right, so we're jumping into the fog lights, which is probably gonna be the most complicated part of this because to get to the fog light bolts, 
the bumper has to come off. So there are two 13 millimeters inside each fender well. So crank it hard, passenger, take those off, hold the bumper up, crank it hard, driver, take those off, and you can pull the bumper off. I have done this by myself. It is better with a helper. So if you can find a second person, it is a little easier to keep your bumper looking good. All right, so we're gonna remove the fog light. We elected to leave the valence in place, which means the Allen bolts that are underneath here are not accessible. So what we're gonna actually do is take off the adjustment pivot bolt. Um, so you've got a 14 on one side and a 13 on the other side. And at least with the passenger side one, they're very, very, very tight. Um, so just take your time, be careful taking these off because um, obviously the body is pretty thin right there and you don't wanna bend that. And so we're gonna do our best to just hold the light in place and crack that nut off, and then you can just hold the other side. So once you get to here, you'll see you've got a nut here, push that bolt out, and then you've got gonna have two cool conical washers that are gonna mate up with this and hold that centered. So the wiring does not actually have a plug, it's just clipped here behind the horn, so you can Lift that clip up a little bit, give yourself some room to work with, and then you can pop these apart. I'm just going to use a flat head. You can use a trim tool or whatever you want. And you're going to pop the housing off. You're just going to pop that front off your lens. Make sure that you save your original Hella bulb type sticker for your scrapbook. And then we're going to remove the bulb. You're going to link these two wires push them down and out, and they'll rotate back. And then you can pull the bulb free from the reflector, set this to the side. With the bulb, you have a tiny set screw here that is holding the wire. So you'll undo your set screw, and you'll be able to pull the positive wires out. Your bulb is now out. And then you can take your ground wire off and you can go ahead and pull these out. Now is a great time to change this gasket if you need it to. Um, I like to pull the positive wires through first, and then we will pull the other two, or the one with the uh, female connector on there. So the easiest thing I find is to just push the gr grommet through with the screwdriver, and then you can put it all back in together. And now we will take our housings over to the bench. If they need to be cleaned up, painted, whatever you wanna do, painting them uh, purple, black, whatever your choice, Now's a good time to do that, and then we'll get them back in place. So we're gonna rebuild this on the bench, and we'll bring it back over as an ascent. <laughs> All right, so we have the fog lights out of the car. Um, like we showed you on the car, I'll show you again. Push the two tabs down and lift, and then you can pull your fog light out. This is why it's not just like a quick bulb replacement, it's a full drop-in replacement. So what we actually need to do here, and uh, we think we're one of the first that are doing this, is we're gonna take the reflector completely out. So there are four clips, one, two, three, four wire clips that hold this in. And you can just take a screwdriver and pop the clips out. Probably be better if you did not let them fly across the garage. And you just have to kind of work these out. It's like a, it's like a spring clip or a sir clip. So we've got two and then the rest should come out pretty easy here. Three, and then you should be able to just let this out. So once we get our four clips out, the housing, the bulb. I'm just gonna put this back together to go in your originality scrapbook and you can set this off to the side. Perfect. So we will not use any of this any longer with the exception of the glass. So this seems like a sealed piece, but that's just cause it's super old. Take your screwdriver, right it here at the top and give it a little bit of a push. And then you can separate 
the glass lens from the housing. And you can see that this is what was sealing it and it's obviously completely trashed. So pull that seal out. We're not gonna use that again. We're not gonna use this again. So let's go back to our workpiece here. And we've got our lens also marked Hella. Weirdly enough, the fog lights mark Hella at the bottom where everything else marks it at the top. So we'll give this a good quick cleanup. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to set our housing down and then we're gonna put in the new seal. Uh, so the new seal is gonna sit in here. And then this is gonna sandwich down on top of it. All right, so once we set our gasket in, set the lens on key to the little top, you're gonna introduce it to the bezel housing, which has a very small indentation right there where my finger is, which is actually the bottom. You can feel it on the glass there. So your best bet, at least what we found is successful here, is to lay it on there, turn it over, and then put a couple of clamps on it gently, nothing super strong, no vice grips, to hold everything in place while you get your wire clips. So I'm just gonna use something sitting in the garage to set it on, and then we're gonna start putting these clips in. You can see the four spaces where they intend you to put the clips. So the best thing to do with the clips is, is to hook in one side, put it in the spot, hook it in, get it in that little indentation there, and then you're gonna take a screwdriver, it's probably just a flat blade, and push this down carefully and gently until it goes in place. This is a little bit precarious, especially with the very first one. Um, so just take your time with the screwdriver. There may be a better tool that's for this, and then it'll snap in place. So I'm gonna jump across and do the one over here, and then we'll put on the last two. So you can see it's got a long side and a short side. It's probably easier to hook in the short side and then in gain your leverage here on the long side. And so I can almost do it by hand with the long side here. Right. So we got two in place. Now our clips are kind of uh, not as critical here, but we'll still go ahead and leave them on until we get the last one in place. So let's pop that off and do it this other way. So after doing a few of these, hook the short side and then use the one that's a lot longer to get more leverage and pushing it down. It's just a little easier to push it down. So you can even just put your screwdriver on there and let it fall underneath. And we'll do the last one. Hook it on there. Push this guy down. There you go. So what is gonna look sideways from the, from the back, top of the housing, bottom of the housing, and the wire will come out to the side. Um, so this is completely rebuilt. Uh, this will just snap back over the back housing and then we'll look at connecting the wiring. Ready? Yep. Go for it. All right, so we got our back housing over here. We're gonna plumb our stock two wires through here and we'll get that grommet back there in a minute. But what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna take and cut this white end. Uh, there's a little piece of solder on there and I just don't wanna reuse that. And then we're gonna strip that back. And then we're gonna crimp on a female or a male end. If you don't have automatic wire crimpers, you definitely should get some. And then now our light should just plug in. So this will be our ground. It'll hook in right here. And this will be our hot wire. Now, if we turn on the fog lights, let's make sure we're ready to go. And we got fog lights. Turn it off. And so then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna wind this wire into the back housing. Make sure you line up the top with the top. I like to hook it on the top first, line up this little notch in the bottom and then it should, if you have everything lined up correctly, it should just snap together. You may have to use your screwdriver to push on a little bit. And then 
you'll be all back together. And at that point, you can deal with your grommet and getting this back in place. And then we will bolt this guy back down into its stock home. So I'll use a little screwdriver and get that grommet back in there. And then you'll put your conical washers here and here. And you'll put that through bolt back in and you can align it. So we're gonna change the blinker relay to an LED style so that you don't get that super fast blink. On the 914, the LED or the flasher relay is up under the dash. It's not on the relay board. So take the two Phillips heads out of the relay board, drop it down, and it's up behind the hazard switch. And it's just a simple plug and play. Make sure you get it in the right orientation. There's really only one way this can go since you've got one pin keyed 90 degrees off from the others. So pop that in there while you're in the car and then you can move on to new blinkers in the back. This is the relay that needs to be swapped out with the one that comes with the Spokeworks kit. The black wire with a blue trace has to be snipped off here. And then this splitter has to be created with a male, two males on one end and a female on the other. You unplug the gray wire from here and then plug the, put a female end on the blue, on the black wire with the blue stripe, plug it in here plug the gray wire that you unplugged in here and now your fog lights will run when the headlight switch is in the running position. All right, so, so we are gonna move on to the back and we're gonna pull the taillight housing, uh, taillight lens off. Uh, so you're just gonna undo the hand nuts, however many you have, this car actually has all three uh, from inside the trunk here and then we'll pull that lens out. Um, so keep track of those inside the trunk here. You shouldn't actually need to do anything else on the inside other than just pulling out the lens. So be careful with these. Those lenses can be expensive to replace. Right, so we got our three plastic hand nuts out. And then we will go ahead and pull our housing off. So it's a great time if you need to change the seals on these. It's a great time to do that. Clean this out. So. We'll let all the nature out of these guys and then we'll move on to pulling out our bulbs. So in order, you can see we have the reverse lights, the brake lights, and tail lights or turn signals over here. So um, we are gonna go ahead and pull these bulbs out. We'll do one at a time. We will probably start with the reverse light, which is just a simple twist. And then we'll show you the new one for coming in. So here is your reverse light board same style connection these are uh, the same depth they're equal lugs and so you're just going to push this in push and twist and then the board is just going to use these little 3d printed clips that are going to clip onto actually i'll probably clip the, the clips onto the inside here right there and there's one to hold it on the other side and then you are good to go. So just be careful with the little 3D printed pieces here. You don't want to crack one of these because there are not spares readily available at your parts store. So once that board is all the way seated down, you got bright new reverse lights. So there is nothing in this hole. Let's move on to the taillight brake light. Pull that bulb out, unequal lugs, and we'll grab the new one. All right, so this is the brake and taillight assembly. It's three wire. Uh, and so you've got clips in a couple of different places here. So we're gonna do this shallow clip uh, on the side with one. And then we have two deeper clips that'll go on the other side. And this is what's gonna retain it into the housing. So we're gonna go one, 
right there. Like I said, you don't need to get these super tight. And then we'll do two of these deeper ones, like this, um, to make sure that it goes into the housing nice and flush. So it'll sit in flush into the setup. So what I typically have done is just drop the screw through here and then try to line it up because it's pretty far down in order to be able to get that screw in there if you're doing it by hand. Just put your fingers on the backside. These are not blind holes, so you can run that screw right into your finger if you're not paying attention. So we'll tighten these guys up and then we'll slide this in place. Like I said, just snug. Give yourself a little bit of room there. And one more. So I'm going to back these off just enough that I can rotate this as I need to. And we'll slide it in place. So this is going to plug in the same way as the other ones have. And you can just look and see which lug is the shallow lug and which lug is the deep lug. And you can see which way it turns. This one's going to turn. So this should turn clockwise. Helps if you put it in the right direction. So what we're gonna do is get these clips started on the outside so that it sits flat. If you had clips that were the same, your brake light would angle out. So I'll get that one started. And then get these started on the inside. And we're almost there. So you can see by putting those offset clips, the LEDs sit perfectly flat to the back of the car. And that's ready to go. We'll move on to our outside marker and bulb, and we'll get in this little guy, take our large bulb out, and then we'll take this small marker bulb out from the side as well, and then we'll put the new ones in. All right, so we have our two clips on the inside of the car. They're gonna clip in here on the reflector. We have our clip on the outside here that's gonna clip in here. And so the best way to do this is to get your two inside clips started. Take your outside clip, pull it to the outside of the car, clip it over that reflector housing, just like that. And then you can slide that all the way down and seat it, and then you can plug in this last small connection here uh, for your side marker lights. So that'll hold everything in place, pulls it in a little bit tighter, and at that point you can slide your housing in from the outside and you'd be good to go. All right, so we're gonna do tag lights next. The first thing you wanna do is just loosen the wiring harness on the inside here, loosen this clip and get yourself some slack. Otherwise, you'll never get these disconnected. So you need a little bit of slack here and then you can just use your Phillips head and lower the tag light and it's a pretty straightforward swap. So we're gonna unscrew these. They just screw into the bummer top. Fortunately, this one is in good shape and so it's actually really easy to do. One out. So I'm gonna push from the inside and just give my, feed myself a little bit of wire as we go here. Trying to make sure that we don't pull these connectors off. So looks like there's a little bit of electrical tape on so it's harder to push through here. So we're gonna unhook one, unhook two. And it looks like we might have a broken wire here. Um, so we are gonna just pop our bulb out and then we'll deal with the wire. So 
spill the rubber part off of the housing. And then the bulb just pushes, turns, and pops out. And the LED one pops in. So this is a super, super simple little fixture here. It just has a little detent that holds the bulb. And then when you slide it back in, make sure that the two uh, prongs for the wiring come through the two little peat holes in the boot here. So you just mess with that until you can get it to line up correctly. There you go. All right, super simple. Connect your two wires back up and screw it back in. We're gonna take care of this broken wire and then we'll plug it back in. All right, so we're gonna take care of the trunk light, engine compartment light here. It's already kind of taken apart here, so we're just gonna take out the two Phillips head screws. And then just for sake of showing you guys, take our bulb, line it up with two of the corners. You can turn it either way and it just keys in on that bump right there. At that point, we can slide this cover back over it like this. And we'll put our gasket on from the other side. And then we'll try and slide this guy down in here. You may be better to just hold your gasket up there, put a screw through it, and then put the housing in. The um, release for the engine cover is right there, kind of in the way here. So we're gonna try to hold this up in place as best we can. You can also just put a little tape or something on that. So once that's here, I can grab my light and bring it back up. At least in my car, anytime that the lights are on, this light is on. And so you look in the engine compartment and it's pretty much always burning. Um, I don't actually even know if mine works on the trunk side. So put that in there with our little gasket to protect that from the body. And tighten her down. That's another easy one done. So these bulbs are not part of the kit from Smokeworks, but I will make sure that I uh, put a list and a link to those parts in the description. Can you tell us how, how the light is? Right yeah, it wouldn't hurt, sure, why not? All right, so if your car is equipped with gauges here, this car is air conditioned and has gauges. Um, these should just slide out if you're super lucky, which I think we're gonna be today. And just try and keep it as straight as you can and gently wiggle that out. This just pulls out and these bulbs just have two, two barbs or two sides. And so we're just gonna line up, slide our new one in, turn it till it's clocked correctly. Push it back in and that is all she wrote. So it's the same thing for the bottom one. Now let's move on up to the gauges in the instrument cluster. So with your instrument cluster gauges, they should similarly slide out. It just has a rubber grommet gasket, whatever you wanna call it, that holds these in place. So the most important thing is that your charge light is not changed to an LED bulb. If it doesn't have the right resistance, then it's not going to work correctly. So um, we will make sure to change out the ones that illuminate the sides, uh, but we will not change out the ones that illuminate um, you know, our warning lights. So we've got our grounding charging light, our uh, parking brake, our oil pressure switch, and then we're gonna have illumination lights around the outside. So we're gonna just do those illumination ones. So I'm gonna just try and keep this as close to here as I can and then we will pop in some new ones. All right, so all three gauges are pretty much the same. You just got backlight illumination in this one. Um, I'm, you may have bulbs for the blinkers there. Um, and then we've got backlight illumination in here and then your high beam indicator. So we're gonna pull the tack out. We are fortunate that these come out pretty easy. This tack is not, does not come out very far. So you're gonna have to kind of deal with working it back in there. So I can see this one's got, looks like it's got three. So some of the ones for the backlight illumination are just a single wire. So we did have to, on a couple of those, use some small pliers to pry or to wiggle them out 
to get the LEDs in there. So I'm going to fight with these and uh, we'll show you what that looks like when it comes out. Come on. Yep. So that just pops out and we'll pop a new one in. So this one is three. It's um, two for the backlight. You can see it on right there. And then it's one for the high beam indicator. So we'll pop, it. So we'll pop this last one for the backlight in. We'll bring our tack up, put it in centered and nice and straight. There you go. You got a nice white backlight lighting up your tachometer. On the speedometer, it should just be one, if not two. This one is a little harder to get out because remember, you've got a speedometer cable on here too. So it's got a lot more in the guts. So you're gonna have to do this one probably by, by feel and not by sight here. So I can see that there's one up here and there's one way over on this side. So you may have to get a flathead screwdriver to pop those out. We're gonna get off this one that's a little easier to get to here. Check it. Yep, that one's good. And on the other side. Flathead screwdriver is definitely better than the pliers. That's the move if you're going to do this job in your car. There we go. LED lights all the way across, lighting up the uh, fuel, the tack, and the speedometer. Job done for in the inside. All right, so the backpack light takes a different LED than the other pieces on the inside. These lenses can become super fragile. It, this was actually the first one that the owner changed. So we're actually just gonna leave this in here. It just comes out very carefully, or if you really want to, you pull the seats forward and pull the whole back pad out. Um, one of the reasons people don't change these, or they do change them, is if you leave it on, then it'll melt this eventually from the heat. So uh, be sure to change that one as well. So this is the backlight. It's not exactly a 914 backlight, but it's the same deal. It takes this shaped bulb, and it just goes in here like this. You just have to kind of work this way in here with the LED bulb. And that's really all she wrote. So that's what it looks like on the inside of your light. Just be careful taking that out or go ahead and order a replacement. All right, so the 914 is no GT40, but it is an extremely low car. Uh, when I've driven mine and when I've been with other 914 owners, you don't realize how much smaller they are even than like normal Honda Civics and CRVs and stuff like that. So we are gonna add an LED third brake light. We're gonna just use some adhesive. It's actually gonna go up here right below the target pad. And so we're gonna bring the wire around and down and tap into some uh, brake wire underneath here. Um, but this is gonna add a little bit of layer of safety. It's a great upgrade. I don't know of anybody that makes a kit specifically for this, um, but it's definitely something 914s could use for a little bit better visibility when driving around. So we're gonna pull out the little center storage bin here in order to access this. And then uh, we're gonna pull that wire down and around to get to where we need to go. Um, so we are gonna tap into the brake line right here, or not the brake line, but uh, the brake power signal. And so I'm just gonna ground this to the little screw that holds the inspection cover on the early cars. That's how you adjusted the shifter and it's a huge pain. Fortunately on the late cars, you don't have to do that. So it's just kind of an inspection port into the tunnel. So it's a good time to just make sure this is all clean. Everything's happy. You don't have any uh, major issues going on in your tunnel. So we're just gonna crimp this in. I'm gonna tie it in right here to this little screw. So what we're doing is I'm just gonna use the power probe and I'm actually just gonna pierce this one out, my finger or the wire, I don't know which one. Um, and we're gonna just get this. Actually a better option would be to just take our strippers and scrunch the insulation back a little bit. He hits the brakes. Hit it again. Hold, hit it and hold it. 
Well, it's only 11 volts, but that should light up the LED light. So we're gonna tap it in right there and then button this up. All right, so we talked about using a scotch lock, but honestly, uh, I have a friend who told me scotch locks are stupid and you shouldn't use them. So here's what I'm gonna do actually. Um, so I use my automatic strippers right in the middle of the wire to pull apart a little bit of wire. You can use your probe or, you know, flathead screwdriver, whatever. And I split it into two strands here. And now that I've stripped this wire back, I'm actually gonna strip back just a tiny bit more. And what's gonna happen is I'll twist it all together, put this through the hole that I've made. Let's twist this together so it goes through as one big strand here. So we're gonna pop that through the center. And then I'm gonna wrap this around as tightly as I can here. Maybe even get some pliers to wrap this around. That way I've not put a huge block or cut my wire. And now if I put a little heat shrink or a little electrical tape on there, that is a super nice tight connection. You could even take your crimpers and just squeeze it a little bit. But if we hit the brake lights, you should have signal. And that is actually a pretty clean way to tap into that wire that doesn't affect the structural integrity or cut any strands. Our 914 LED conversion is complete. Uh, so vintage car LED for the headlights and spoke works for everything else. Uh, we get everything working and you can see in that comparison, it is tremendously brighter. Third brake light is a huge addition as well. So stay tuned to the Barefoot Garage right here on YouTube. Let us know what you're doing on your 914 and between episodes at Barefoot Garage Jacks over on Instagram. See you guys.